Hey folks, it's Mike at the Pen Outpost. Got a new ink for you today. Um, it has been out about four, five, six days, something like that. It came out in the middle of last week. Um, it started hitting retailers and um, our shipment got delayed because we had a little error on our order form. So ours just came in today. So I'm just getting to play with this for the first time. And this ink, as I started playing with it, brought out so many different oddities and um, different qualities that I decided to do a deep dive on this one or a deeper dive than we normally do or that I normally do. Um, so I've got a couple different things planned for you here, but let's, let's talk about it at first. It's called Rhino. Uh, the long name is Recreant Rhinoceros. And I'm not going to get into the political um, statement that Nathan is attempting, I suppose, to make <laughs> with this. Um, you can look that up for yourself. It's uh, having to do with the, the governor of Massachusetts. But let me at least read to you what the bottle says. The gray-green color of the jungle rhinoceros based upon a conventional blue and a permanent red. We'll dig a little deeper into that in a minute. A more deeply blue house divided in reference to the Massachusetts governor and what an oath of office means. So that's all I'm going to say about that. But referring to that top line, a red, a permanent red and a traditional blue or conventional blue, which means it's not waterproof. And a permanent red means waterproof. So that means this ink is going to have a waterproof quality to it. So I did a test and I'll show you the results of that test in a minute. But um, basically what, what he's saying here is this ink was made from two different colors. It was made from a red and a blue. Now how you end up with a green from a red and a blue, I don't know. Um, but that's how this ink was developed. And if you look at my swab of my sample here, if I can get it in focus uh, without the light on it. If you look over here, see that little stripe right there? That's what color is supposed to be, the, the ink is supposed to be. But my swab uh, dots are pulling a lot more of the red for whatever reason, and I'm not exactly sure why that is because the initial sample swab that I did of this showed none, showed none of the red. So that's coming through for some for some reason. but. I also did a chromatography um, of this, which we will cut to in a few minutes, and that was turned out interesting as well. So let's go ahead and get a writing sample and do a swab, and then we'll discuss some of the other things. Ooh, let's see if I can pop that bubble without making a mess. Rhino for short, and Rhino is an acronym, <laughs> FYI, if you didn't know. This is a fairly wet ink. But I'm not sure how fast it dries, so we'll um, take a look at that. I, don't, I didn't really time it on my first swab that I did. Now you can see how it goes down as a super, super dark green, um, almost black, and then it lightens up. There are some shading qualities to this ink, which are nice, but um, as this ink dries is what's really interesting and the, the color starts to come out. And I've been considering cutting out the ink drying uh, little montage, you know, slow-mo thing that I, or, or whatever, a clip that I do in my videos uh, just for the sake of efficiency and uh, time and editing and all that stuff. And but I did it because I thought it would add a bit of whimsy in the middle of the video, but I'm not sure how valuable that really is if people like to see it. So if you like to see it, uh, let me know uh, in the comments and give me a little feedback on that if that's worth keeping in there. This one seems to be drying pretty quickly, so there's not going to be uh, a whole lot of... Uh, waiting on this one but uh yeah just let me know if you like to see that and for now we'll let this go for a few more minutes just to get it to its full dry fully driest point
I'd say that's almost dry. Really, really close. The, the word rhino there at the bottom is probably still a little wet, and it may be a little wet up in here, but you can see there's some interesting shading going on. And in my first swab that I did, uh, I actually got, the, this, got a little bit heavier at the top. So you can see how that gets that real darkness, but you don't really see any red anywhere in there. Now, if, if you catch the light just right, it almost sheens red, but not quite, not quite. So I'm not sure where this is coming from or why it is happening other than, which happens fairly often, being the paper difference. Um, I actually just started switching to Tomo River 68 GSM from the 52 that I used to use. And this is traditional paper. So it could have to do with the paper. Um, this is like 20, probably either 20 or 24 pound regular paper that these labels are made out of. So uh, the red might be rising to the surface. I don't know. I'm gonna have to do a test on some regular paper and see what happens. <clears throat> but nice shading, definitely a greenish blue or a blueish green. Uh, has a little gray undertone. And I mean, you can see some other color in there. I mean, that red, it doesn't show as red, but it shows us some interesting shading. So enough about that. I did do um, a chromatography test. And I tell you what, let's cut to that clip right now. And I'll let you see that a uh, little time lapse real quick. Okay, so this is what we ended up with. <clears throat> I don't have any fancy paper for doing these, so I just use paper towels. If somebody has a recommendation on a, a better <laughs> way to do chromatography, let me know. But um, the you see that there's I put three drops in the center and then the water around the outside, and it's pulling some of the orange out here on this side, which is interesting, and a little bit over here, but that reddish purple in the middle there. Um, is, would stay behind. If I were to soak this in water, all, whoops, all of that green would leave and that reddish orange would likely stay behind. And I say that because the waterproof test that I did is this. So this is a nice heavy swab. Uh, it got lighter at the bottom, but I don't think that matters much. You can see how where it was soaked right around, along that line right there and the water bled up the side just a little bit, but that is the permanent red that this ink is based on. And the blue that was uh, used to give it this color has faded away. So that gives us a pretty good foundation for this ink. I don't know what else there is to say about it other than it is a shader. It has a partial waterproof quality. Um, it is very wet. And um, it's going to do different things on different papers, I think. So let me know what you guys think, if, uh, if you've got it already or if you're planning to get it. I like this one. It's, I'm not a big fan of super wet ink, so I'm going to have to put this in a, probably an EF pen. But I think, um, I think it's, a, it's, a, it's a good one to have. So there you go. Noodler's Recreant Rhinoceros, or Rhino for short. It's available in a 3 milliliter sample. And a three ounce bottle at the pen outpost on eBay and the penoutpost.com. Thanks for watching.